three of that 60 as we are here for day number one of the PUBG Europe League. We have our plane in the sky for game number three. We are going west to east, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning in around the world. It's time for game number three. All right, so we got this off. We got this off a plane co going on here. And that means that this might be one of the planes that we're talking about. We might see people dropping to military island because they can't go all the way to north. It's such a far stretch. You're going to drop on other people's drop spots and try to take their vehicles, if not. And that might be a disaster for you. Absolutely. I also, also think it's worth it having kind of an adaptive drop if you are one of the teams looting yeah. on the far edges of the zone. This is very good. We see, I think it's NIP we see going to military, so it's, it might pay off. We might get the military circuit I'm asking for. I'm looking forward to see how this uh, game is going to pan out. I mean, considering the plane, not too bad adaptation. You know it's probably going to be open anyway, so not much risk involved there for us. Yeah, uh, but look, look at Pachinko. Though. Look at Pachinki. Uh, That's what uh, we should look uh, at right now. <laughs> Navi and Liquid, they are back at it. Who's going to win the fight this time? That's a very important question. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's time to head over to our commentary team as our circle pops. Take it away, boys. <laughs> yeah, welcome hmm. back, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason I'm laughing hmm. is because NIP have just adjusted and said, all right, that's, we can't really make it to South George. They've gone to Sosnovka, oh. and the circle goes to South George. <laughs> that's... Um... <laughs> That's a big meme. That's literally a big meme. They go to the opposing end of, of not even just the map, but the complete space available, and the circle just goes completely away from them. It's and, just fair play. And you know what? I reckon the Jokers spotted that, and they are known to be camping that bridge because that is like their loot territory. So, And you can't go East Bridge because G2 and TSM are there. It's put and I'd be in a really tricky spot. So, oh. But look still, at this. We're back in Pachinki, right? Yeah, we've Here still we go got again. this battle going on. I think it's something that we're going to have to focus on every single time because we don't see... You know, we always talk about this game of hot dropping and you know people going on each other, blah, blah, blah. Well, we've literally got two teams smashing the living crap out of each other every single game now for the third game in a row. So we have to absolutely focus on Team Liquid and Navi. It would be wrong to, to look elsewhere and wrong to completely not talk about them. Time and time again, we've seen a, a battle and bodies falling on, on opposing sides, and it's just doing so much damage to their economy in the late game that they're really struggling. Um, <clears> and if they stay here, it's as simple as this, and, and this is a, a big call, but I think it's a truthful is call. If they both keep going here time and time again, neither of them will win a single map. Ooh. Big shout, considering they're 7th and 8th at the moment, but I did just talk to them uh, a moment ago, and they're just saying, look, people wanted the action early on, didn't they? So, you know, we're, giving, we're, people we're, give, we're giving people what they want. We're giving people what they want. And also, it's, enter yeah, it's, it's entertaining. And sooner or later, one of them will back down. But I'm not convinced it will. This is the, uh, the third round of Erringar. We're going to be moving on to Miramar after this. So I guess we're going to see what happens tomorrow if they continue this battle. Or maybe even they start dropping, they uh, what Miramar. was it, Picado, the Team Liquid. Maybe Navi drops into Picado Imagine. afterwards as well. Imagine. <laughs> uh, but anyway, anyway. Um, Looking further afield, obviously NAP, they dropped down Sosnovka, you know, Digital Athletics. We haven't talked about these guys too much, but, you know, they're going about their business. As expected, some of the teams that struggled to squeak through, I think it's safe to say, in uh, Minsk, are down the lower area of the table. But one of the teams that did do incredibly well was the Jokers. And they have not had a good start. They were the top team in Minsk by quite a margin. Yeah, we've not really seen too much of them so far. But you know, it's with it being a completely different environment. This is this is literally a land league. All the players are living out here. All the players are in a different territory. They're not at the home computer. They're in an environment where they have to speak to their teammates, their sponsors, their their you know their their, their team tos mm. every single day. They are well and truly out of their comfort zone. And I don't think we'll kind of see the They're out of their country. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, no, I mean, it's, it's literally a different country. Oh, hello. Totally different environment altogether. I don't think we'll see a complete, some of these teams really opening up to what we saw at the standards. Wait, until is later this team on liquid going south? What they, in the world is they happening here? They're actually doing a drive by on this vehicle, which so, is insane. But they've, they've gone they've south. They've actually done it. I don't believe it. it. And they've actually got the match. But Kemba's coming. He's managed to get the knock because they've gone down into Joker's territory. Team Liquid have here. They're going to get the revive, it seems. The smokes have all gone down there. But look at Kemba. Kemba's laying in the fight. Now, Kemba was a massive damage dealer in Minsk. He is a very good player. Looking towards the side, I can see Senya's now coming this way. Tab's coming this way. So Joker's are getting involved. 
So they've opted to go down south. Nabi have also left, and they're going to, to the central area around the Ganka chopsticks, or, or as some people do like to call it. I'm always mm. a bit of a, a fan of the ditches or the divots, whatever else you want to come. Vitality may also swing in there as well. So be aware of this central battle, because up north, again, people will be looking further afield. You've got that Georgia Paul River that comes in from the seaside and goes all the way through. So in theory, all right, it's not a bad circle, but... The entire northern end of this map, Ooh. you won't really see people going for one too one. much. And this is what I spoke about in the very first game, Lee. Kills are vitally important, and it's okay setting yourself to a standard. Oh, we'll go and kill these people, we'll find them, we'll pick them up. Mm. But it's what you get in return. Do you opt? Okay, I've got a point now, but you're losing a man for that kill. It's like a game of chess. Mm. You have to weigh up the options and weigh up, is it really any point in losing a man so early on and just it, for one? And there's obviously we're talking about how the new point system is, because if you think of the old days, you'd be thinking you've got to be getting into phase five and six of the, the circle settings coming in with four alive, That's, or you'd got no chance. That used to be the, the old method. So if you lost one in rotation, it was a tragedy. It is definitely changed the meta somewhat, I think it's safe to say, and obviously this circle, it's a circle we've seen a lot. Where's your money on for this one? I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna see the classic just to the west of Everest. You know that hillside position, yeah. just sort of South Hospital, that big hill there. I'm thinking we might see a finish there, but of course it is circle one, it can swing any old direction at the moment. I like As the we watch aerial face tower. on the road take. The yeah. aerial tower, just left of Gatka. I think that one's good where you get the point up on top, then you've got all the uh, the, the hair barrels, or even yep, the corn yep. barrels that you can go up against. It's always a decent one. Uh, a bit of a frantic fight, and that's a good bit of open ground. So again, you can start to predict not only, well, you can't really predict where the circle's going to swing, but you mm. can at least get ahead of the game and say, put yourself in, a, in, a, in the best possible position. That's what the position. IGLs are doing right now, right? Yeah. You know, obviously, you've had your standard loot. You see your circle come in and say, let's try, you know, rotate, swing around north, swing around south, whatever they're going to do. Team Liquid obviously chose to go south, and we'll see whether it works out as they head towards that swamp ground, maybe look towards the, the satellite tower hill or something like that, which is... One of these guys are doing at the moment. G2 are actually posting just to the edge of Pachinki, so actually sticking quite far east. Look at this face swing. This There's is a deep south. Yeah. They, are, they are literally lingering on the edge, and mm. they might actually get behind the Jokers here if... I think they're probably expecting the Jokers to be gone by now, but because they were delayed by Team Liquid so much, oh it's God. actually imagine, stalled them out. Imagine if NIP get caught on this bridge as well. I mean, NIP do have an option. They go for a boat and take it up on the western shores and, and hit the western coast. Walkie Bucky, easy kill for him. Calls collects as... Uh, Six more turns up, and unfortunately turns that's, out. That's really late. They've, they've come into Rosok. Now, obviously, Digital Athletics loot Rosok. Whoa, so what are they still doing staff. here? Eight minutes in. That is a long loot session for them. Hey, but TSM have caught two of them out. Gustav just dumps at him. Instant in the face. Back to back, and he's down. I mean, he always says a beautiful death. NIP now are going to run the gauntlet. Oh, and and in, in absolute no world would you ever, ever, ever expect Face Clan to be this deep down south. And Pittsburgh and Knights are coming down here as well. Pretty much on the edge. This is a wild... They might get lucky here. They might just yeah. find a gap. Fears have continued onwards towards Ferry Pier. There's a crate there, and that's what kind of they're focused on right now. Mexi is the last man to come across. If he gets the call out, okay, they're all across. It's fine. But here goes Danger Mexi. <laughs> but that could have been unbelievably dangerous. Well, the Knights have got themselves third and first place so far. They're also heading down here. That is a beautiful crate, by the way. Uh, Mark 14 with the suppressor, obviously all the level 3 gear that you get with the crates these days. Remember how much but that's cost info. Them. That's cost phase. Look at the position now, down that south. The Knights are ahead of them, so they're kind of going to get gatekept. They're always going to be on the back, unless unless phase do what they used to do. They're old in rotations, which is go right over to the west coast. It looks like that's what they're going to do, and then hard north. That was an old rotation phase used to do. They'd actually stopped doing it for a long time. They started to position on Potato Hill and start coming in pretty much direct lately. They'll at least have the info. Max will be able to say, okay, there's a team ahead of us, so we need to be aware of that and then reposition accordingly. West Coast still can support quite a lot of teams because there's so many individual <coughs> compounds and little mini huts that you can go wandering about in. It's going, it's going the way we, we called it so far. It kind of sent Ooh, it up this circle. Him. Twice, Jazz in fact. Jazza, uh, was he highest but damage dealer in the last game? I think he was, right? Highest damage dealer. Obviously, Vitality involved in a lot of fighting in the last game, despite not coming out on the top. G2 up on... The top of Everest, a lot of teams starting to crowd in this way. Ensa still very late coming in. TSM choosing to swing around the north side, by the way, towards the uh, Georgie Paul side. Looks like they're going to swing around the bridges up that way. Uh, Three-man Dacia run. Uh, I think it's uh, who's running in behind. Gustav's the one lagging behind at the moment. But uh, yeah, M19. 
by the way, really late coming out of Yasna. I choose also choosing to go that northern route. Very close to Ensa, actually. They're just swapping the Mensa at the moment. Looking like, meanwhile on the map, you can see Red Diamonds. They started in the hospital and they've pretty much stayed around there. You can see Windstrike chose to go on towards that uh, Edge Hill compound to see if that. Crocrite have actually headed further south. They were further north where they were now. TSM continue to come in. Looks like they're going to go right over towards North Georgia Pole's bridge and come in that direction, which Ents are also trying to do. They're going to be a little late to the party. If they catch wind of maybe Trifoli or Rustamar coming in, they may try and catch them off guard. The only thing about this circle is that you have Everest, you have the big open cornfields that are just below Red Diamonds, and then down at the bottom where Fears are going to be coming in, you have that large swamp area. So there are quite a a few big areas that are completely denied and not really look an at, area where anyone's going to go, which will force spread. all these teams pretty much into the center, unfortunately. It's kind of a bottleneck because but, of the topology of the map. But look at that center. Look at the large spread that Team Liquid have taken. Bang in that center, all those compounds, and it's Team Liquid, Team Liquid, Team Liquid, Team Liquid. Which is good because there's backup options, right? And you kind of, and again, you as an IGL, you have to play a game of poker here. You have to look at lay of the land and decide what do we play. I mean, they have a hold of the entirety mm. and the integrity, Gatka to be honest fields, with you, of Gatka. And more importantly, the, the, the single individual players. But if a team walks by, all you've got to do is just shoot your gun in the air and you think, okay, well, that's that's the compound. We're not going to bother pushing it. If you aren't going to push it, then fair play. You know, why the hell not? You deserve to take that compound because you're committing to it. And your IGL said it's a good player to do so. But again, as this IGL playing this poker game and trying to preempt, okay, where's the best possible players? Putting four players spread like that, it's fantastic mm. work. It's really, really good. And they're playing for the late game, they're playing for the long game. We'll see if it plays out. Of course, everybody kind of getting a position, just a win strike, collecting themselves in. M19 coming into the backside of Everest. Nobody up there now, so they should be safe to close in. Ensa now coming also over the North Georgia Pole Bridge, so they're going to be joining in everybody now inside the circle where will we be heading will it be north south east west it's centering up and look at that it's right into the spot you wanted it there's hay bale hills where raise your edge sitting quite comfortably right now they also have the more dangerous position to the south of them which is really their weak point so they've actually been very clever with this 2-2 split looks like they're going to Try and consolidate it. fast rail is going to join them uh samty sending it for the ditch by the way so they're going to get it looks like Probably going to collect in the ditch. They're maybe taking a look towards that hill and seeing who's there. NIP coming over the swampland. Good job. He's got himself a buggy to get through that moggy water and mud. And he's going to get himself actually a nice compound there. But they lost Gaxi in the rotation. Interesting, Ned. Might have been a bit of a waste. Probably just left it to have been wasting a second one as well. He's, he's going to go down. I'd be very surprised if someone got him up from that one. They'd be looking for the smokes. Unless Vard's actually going to go for it and commits to it. Really look after Gaxi. That would be a... A brilliant play from, well, I'd say a brilliant teammate to, in order to do that, which the smokes do go up and over, so they'll be able to come out. Another thing about this, oh, actually, we need to stop for a second. Ents pushing on what looks like the remnants oh, no, of Digital Atletico, who's just dumping all his gear. So I think nope. that leaves Iro, doesn't it? And left alone, yeah, Iro, the last man standing for Digital Athletics. No, that's not good. Well, he's... <laughs> he's Credit to this bloke, Jurin, he got a lot of stick coming in at qualifiers oh, yeah. and people, you know, mentioning about questionable players and such. And he did pretty pretty decent at GLL as an individual and then went and qualified to this and kind of proved a lot of people wrong. So, so fair play, not going so well so far. Um, and he was the man a lot of the time that actually managed to uh, snake them in there. He did some nasty kills. Yeah. He's some... uh, a decent fragger, I've got to say. Uh, oh. Shadow? Keeping our eyes on... Uh, Navi, by the way, and Team Liquid, they're both actually Gakka side, okay. so once again collecting each other. FaZe moving in to the backside of Crow Crowd. Of course, this is way over on the West Beach, sort of side where they're coming in. Crow Crowd have forced themselves towards the side. NIP collecting themselves up and regrouping. Lots of shots being traded. Vitality and M19 still up on that hillside as Jeems gets knocked down there by Navi. We're talking about them getting involved. Uh, you may have also saw uh, Pittsburgh Knights losing a player in uh, a knock, but he's been revived and he's back on his feet, and they're also on the move. The cruel thing about this circle is the fact that we've still got 56 players alive. The next shift that comes through, where do you really go? NIP got their player back on the ground, by the, back on his feet, by the way. So Gaxi, I believe, is, is back in the mix there, it looks like. You've got to suggest that maybe, what, 30% of the map is now covered by a big old cornfield? 
The yeah. rest of it, 30%, well, 20%, 15% covered by Everest, which has two teams, by the way, mm. chilling up on top. I think we, we lost Shadow during that engagement, maybe to G2, seeing him downhill. Now be 2-2 two, two split. It's why we're seeing so many like playing edge right now, Ooh. because there's, there yeah, is a... Be in trouble here. I mean, this next phase will, will certainly whittle the numbers down. You can see Trifoli actually trying to send it early. Oh, and it has gone towards the edge wow. side of Everest. And wow. that's a tricky circle. Look at all of these teams around the southwestern side that are out of it that have to move in. There is no territory left. There is no compounds left. You're looking at trying to make yourself something out of your vehicles. I don't know what god M19 have been praying to, but whatever <laughs> it is, that literally could not have gone any more perfect for them. The circle been stuck up there. It's not great. But the circle to hard shift to where you are on the literally the teetering edge of Everest, they've been given a lifeline. Now, the big question so is, out of those two teams, which one survives? Because whoever does is going to be able to get into the late game. Digital Athletics do go down. Ira's found he's finished 16th place for them. So look at the movement. We've got Crow Crowd sending it. They're going to go straight into Red Diamonds. Red Diamonds just to the southeast of Hospital. Hence also to the east of Hospital. TSM and FaZe Clan also going to be moving in towards Hospital side. Down the south side, Gatka side. Oh, Pittsburgh Knights and Navi have just moved straight on top of each other into the yellow compounds. Got straight in around the side. You can see it's Pittsburgh Knights that came in a little bit later and caught Navi in the back. Buckle Mulder trying to cook that nade out. Not going to land it where oh, he wanted it. Could be late. big. That looks like a good one. It might catch Voxic. I don't think the blast radius is big enough. Yes, it is. He gets him down. Requin also picked off there. Meanwhile, I think that's going to be Navi. Done and out. They're going to try and get one back on his feet. They might not be done yet, but now TSM and Face Clash. Gustav, find an initial pick. It's him, be able to walk on this one. Turns on to a second one as well. Gives Mexi a face full. Keeps wandering around here. The 7-6-2 doing so well. The repositions there. We can also see another player actually walking down. Uber was all tanked up. Rory cop for him. And all of a sudden, the FaZe Clan. I think, are they down to one? I think so. I they think have so. just been opened up like a can of worms. That's insane. And the Blues on Mexi. There's nothing you can do about that one. TSM are playing in their prime right now. Fuzzface gets Wookie down. Is it enough? No. Oh, Red Diamonds get involved. Of course, they've been sat on the edge watching it all play out as a doozy gets Gustav down. And now Michael and Rory forced to back away as Fuzzface is the last man standing for FaZe Clan as he moves on out. TSM. Oh, they run straight uh -oh. into Ensa. Michael gets around the side. Rory in trouble. He's Rory just it. backing away. The Dacia can't do anything. Yeah. The nades are coming down on top of him. Smoke flashbangs. Try and select where you can, but it ain't going to work. TSM go down in 14th place. There's not a great deal you can do off the back of that one. This is what we're going to happen. The rotations like this are going to happen thick and fast. Two players from RYE instantly. Fall victim. Another grenade comes up. Five just eliminates them all. They're dead and gone just like that. It's almost like Wookie Bookie from game one. You sat up there in what was the prime position. But if you rest on your laurels and you get aggressive players, you've got to be welcoming those grenades. Down they go and out of the server they have left. Wow, some big names dropping early, and we were talking about this next phase, how it was going to shift on phase four, because there's just a, a lack of compounds. We were, we've lost six teams, just like that, yeah. just like that. Now Vitality and M19, who have been sat there the whole time, kind of fighting, looks like M19 are finally thinking, we want to try and push for this, gain a little bit more ground, because it's not safe. Once they can get rid of Vitality, or you know, Vitality get rid of M19, they've got the freedom then to start taking pot shots and everyone down below. What do you think? Is it going to shift towards them again? Oh, Are they going I to get going south. a second time? Yeah, okay. <sighs> okay, so Wind now they need to... Wind Strike it right now. They are. For M19, they need to go. They need to do, make something happen. If they've got the grenades, throw them out now. They will know that Shadow's already gone down, so there'll be a man down. They're going for it. They're actually pushing. Look at the top of the hill. We need to get eyes on that fight. The Wanderer's actually gone down. One of the players at the back. Drayden. That's some distance. Yeah, that's down from the yellows. That's a big snipe coming out. M24 <gasps> catches one around. Eventually. Vitality yeah, moving on it the second this. they hear it. Constantine trying to hold them off there. Gets himself prone down, but NASA's pleased the new boy. He's not having any of it. Gets himself one down and flushed him out. The nades come through. M19, they've got the man back on his feet, but they've got to get immediately back into the fight. Grenades going across either side. Jazza needs to run for cover here. They will have this cover for now. But that all depends because M19, they do have a little bit of, I want to say, it's not necessarily definitely, but a bit of a height advantage. They can try and speak out and see if they get that M24 to you, see if they can get any kind of pick and poke. It's three, three up for either side now. 
Vitality have re-rotated, they are inside the circle, so now the, the advantage goes to them. M19 have to break that wall. Miraku trying to send it, NIP looking uh -oh. to the ditch, and this is not a great spot to be, honestly. Team Liquid are just the other side. Nice Very much in nades. nade range. I can see a nade coming out from Bibito already. This could be a three-man nade if he lands it right. Gets around the side, Miraku down to nothing, has to duck away. Is there any more Here coming comes through? The Senya gets involved, he catches one to the side. The Bump. Joker's also pushing along the valley and getting around the side. Samty's tossing the nade out so NIP are in all sorts of trouble. Meanwhile, up in the north, Ensa actually also moving on towards Everest. So Vitality and M19 continue this close engagement of the top here. They may have a third party involved. Ensa might actually do M19 a favor. The Wanderer has definitely cop for this because he moved down further afield. NIP are trying to get the Sentinels back together here because Liquid knew exactly where they were, but there's a crossfire on them. Four teams have all eyes on NIP. The Wanderer has gone down, so that call's come through, and those bullets will be able to herd as well by Vitality, so they'll now be very aware of what's going on. Elite player, he's copped. Jazza sees him and confirms. Narsus there for the initial knock. Nuki comes in with a grenade, two for one again. Just hiding down, and this ball is going to do absolutely nothing for like NIP, that. unfortunately. I really love that play. Um, Windstrike, they kind of been gifted this circle the whole time, but they're not just sitting in their compound. They're going out, they're looking for the kills, and they realize, like, yes, we could possibly get 10 placement points, but we want to get involved. Of course, you can see in the picture-in-picture, picture, the Vitality sweeping out M19 there and finishing them as much as they could. Ehon does get Nasus please down, though, so it leaves Vitality down to two. Joski, the nade comes in again, gets Miraku flushed out, NIP done, and out in ninth place. Samti picking up, stealing away from Windstrike, two of those kills with that nade, and Team Liquid now have to move again. The circle shifts, it goes to Everest, of all things. Windstrike's compound, G2's compound, that's where the action will be happening, as well as Ents continuing this push up the hill. So G2 are basically an anchor point here for three teams. They're gonna hold back the Knights, they're gonna hold back Team Liquid, they're gonna hold back Jokers. Everyone has to push up to them. That's a tough compound to hold, though. It's, it's, it's not got good how angles. How you reach that? You go yeah. up onto a road, it's a flat base. It's basically just open territory. Well, Liquid have vehicles. Oh, they're going to go straight to Jokers. Oh, oh no. that's a disaster. They went straight over the road on a bike, and Jokers said, thank you very much. Two more kills. Remember, they engaged each other very early on. Samty now the last man. Well, he's trying to send it once again. The crate is just off to the side. That'll do. Finds himself a rock and just park himself up. Bank center. What do you do in that position? That's just, that's just unluck. You know, whether or not you could have pre-smoked and, and, and preempted people lingering I mean, there is a completely different story altogether. To an extent, you kind of knew the Jokers were in that ditch because they'd already been engaged a bunch of times. So it was risky to send it there, but I guess it's one of those gambles you just have to take in the moment, right? I mean, Sam is center again, but really, for how many different angles people should have on him. The Knights have gone for a... I say a strange one, but nothing else you can really do. Hello, Senpai eliminates himself. Get himself up to the blue. They're out. They're gone. Unfortunately, excuse me. No, I'm, I'm talking rubbish there. They're not. Best of luck still here. Healing up. Jazza and Monk is still king of the mountain, but unfortunately, Ents are just lingering below them, waiting for them to come down. Squeaky. They want to get Trifoli at least back up. Kemba again now taking position. More importantly, how many dead bodies are here? They'll be able to re up if there's any missing any helmets, any meds, oh. anything like that. Any more smokes or grenades, they will be able to re themselves. Kaint finds two of them back to back instantly like that. Kemba, last man standing here. And it, just just like that, it's, it's almost exactly yeah. perpendicular to what happened with Liquid. You, you step out at the wrong time, a team spots you, two players back to back. I mean, what can he do? Like, he's got, he's got Windstrike to the left, who have been bombing nades on him all the time. He's got G2 to the right. He's choosing to go the Windstrike way and maybe see if he can somehow worm his way over that road. But, you know, Jorski sat ready and waiting. Meanwhile, further north of them, Red Diamond still with three alive, by the way. Keeping their eyes on his hillside. They've been trying to take pot shots onto everybody that, you know, silhouettes on the top there in terms of vitality. Enzo have been burning smokes constantly. Meanwhile, Kemba, you can see in the bottom there, will be done and dusted. So G2 collect another one. They've been working well from this compound to pick up those kills as it's down the top seven. Does Jazz have a helmet? No, he doesn't. Oh, Samty, Samty, Samty. Jazza does have a level one. I think, no, he don't. Yeah, okay. Yep, they're both missing helmets. Okay, so these boys have been smashed to pieces so far. If you've the guys down on the uh, the night side, they've already been picked off once. 
That's a 24 in Drayden's hands. The big man with a big gun might be able to make something happen here. Nade's going up and over. Red Diamond's been hit from two different angles. That actually might find its target. Hits one in the face. You saw the 61 mark come up. Flash idea on the end, four times on the back oh, of the minute. Jazza. Does the job. Jazza again, these, because of how damaged they are up there, they're already missing, they've already been they're down bleeding once. so much, yeah. yeah Rustam Mar's also coming up on it, so they Monkey's going for the revive here, but Rustam Mar, if you can get up the hill in time, I'm not too sure if you can quite get up that angle. He's pushing it, you can see how slowly he can't quite get high enough. No, he can't get up there quick enough. Even in a two-on-one scenario, with how damaged they are, the gear's going to be shot to pieces, the chests, everything. They'll just get mowed down as soon as he comes down the corner because he's got the comp on the back of that scar and he'll just nail these guys. So a bit of movement. Pittsburgh Knights, they've kind of crept in. G2 looking to maybe <gasps> sweep around it. the east side. Mm. Meanwhile, you can see Nookie getting involved, having a look towards it. Windstrike moving out of the compound, looking towards Red Diamonds and flushing. Best of luck out there. Jazz oh, just back on his feet and boom, back down you go. This time, Monkey finished off by Drayden and Vitality will be eliminated. Now, oh, Kramer caught in the back. Drayden down and just like that. Who is it? <laughs> it's Chris. <laughs> Get straight on him. The memes, the memes. Uh, Samty's, speaking of memes, Samty's dream might be over here. As he gets caught between two teams, they're going to see him out. Team Liquid might be going down here. As we say that, actually ends. Turning back to back. Oh, Pitsu Pitsu got nothing. in the back. Tixu one to one. Samty does get a grenade, unfortunately. It's Chris himself. Finds him out. Five kills for ends. Rampage comes through as well. And now they're putting some points on the board. So three Ents players, three Wind Strike players, and four G2 players is now all that stands between first place. We're gonna get ourselves a new winner. The question is, who will it be? Nine kills for Ents. They've slowly been going about their business, haven't they? Squicky picking himself up five, seven kills for G2. We've been seeing what they've been doing, just picking everyone off that tried to came across the road. They have themselves probably the lion's share of position, but Ents are gonna have the high ground, it seems here. Windstrike kind of down low at the moment in that ditch. Not a great position for the Finns to try and get involved. But then again, you could also argue it's six Finns versus four Germans. And yeah, I can, I can kind of get behind that. I can kind of understand it. But unfortunately, the Germans will find the initial pick come through. Jorsky goes down. But look at how spread G2 is. They are taking a foothold, a stamp on the map. The problem is is whether or not Enz tech Enz and, to be fair, Windstrike take oh, two battles on two fronts. I think G2 are going to have to take two different battles here. Yeah. If they win this, this is going to be insane. They have to literally d decide between which team. Do we commit to one or do we battle two at the same time? This is a ballsy play. Two and two split. I like the movement, though. The, the second they got their knock, they tried to go for the quick sweep down the south there. Kane and uh, Brexico tried to get on towards Jorsky. They could see the smokes down. It's a big wall, so they realize too dangerous to push into it. You don't really know what you're running into. So back to way, keeping that high ground. But as you say, they have to keep tabs. Imagine if Windstrike see ends now. Doing, yeah. Imagine if they get if they get a pick on ends, they'll push ends and just go for it. This is an IGL nightmare. What do you do? Do you take ends? Do you take Windstrike? I mean, they have what? 40% of the map because of how they're spread. They also, more importantly, have the bushes, they have the defile, they have the trees, they have the hard cover. They don't have to poke out and peek out instantly. They can wait for the first knock to come between these two, these two teams, let them fight it out, and then strike when one of them has gone down, when they've got an initial knock. Oh, you see, Rustamar, the position they have isn't great. Look, he gets a, just a little peek towards Kane. Realizes he's going to have to smoke his way out of this position. He kind of went down low to try and get this flush on Windstrike. Didn't work out. And now he's kind of got himself caught out of position as Phase 9 comes in. Now, central position, Brexico pretty much stood right on it. The edge teams, Windstrike, they're going for a south flush. They're going to try and push Kane's position. They realize he's down low and split from his team. Now, this might buy time for Ents to try and get their push. I can see they're starting to toss out some smokes to maybe try trying to push further north. At the moment, G2 are the ones holding that central spot. The topology might actually give Ents the advantage here. They might not be able to be seen by G2 just because of the... Yes, exactly that. Are, yeah. the, uh, the, the crest of the ridge will actually hold them here, so if they can smoke out, G2 will fixate onto Windstrike. If Ents want to win this, they have to go now. Okay, this is the, the time for to win. Go. Yeah, he's down. He's in. No, no problem for him there. Rustamar caught out by Chris, though, so we may see them going across the top there. Meanwhile, Kane getting, going down. Chris getting himself a good spray. Nookie gets towards Ents. It's his full three-way battle as Rustamar gets down by Chris and Ents. Suddenly, in all sorts of 
trouble. Tripoli tries to go for it, tries to do what he can. He gets down and squeaky, the last man standing for Enz. Moonstrike, they've still got three alive. They down Enz. It's now three on three. As simple as that, the fights do unfold, and we're down to G2 versus Windstrike. Who will come out on top of this one? Oh, of no! Of course, it will Question. be a G2 